Whether you finished your first UX design project or you are just trying to get your first design job, it's important to make sure you have a solid portfolio. We'll cover the essentials of putting it together and making sure that you stand out to hiring managers, as well as setting up a solid foundation for success in your career. Generally, design portfolios can be broken down into case studies and how those case studies are presented. A UX design portfolio without case studies is like a stew without meat and potatoes. Your goal is to present design work so great that a company needs to hire you. Case studies are how you contextualize that design work. They are generally the whole reason you make a portfolio. Without them, you are going to have a much harder time finding a job. So that's why we're breaking down how to write a case study first. Starting at the top, open a Google Doc, think of a project you've completed, and start writing about your process and approach. Pull it together with a bit of storytelling around the problem that you are trying to solve. Each case study draft should include these six sections. The specifications of your project, including your role, what team you were on, what company you were working for at the time, the project timeline or how long it took to complete, and the tools you used to complete it. Include a problem statement. Include the solution you developed. Include design features, just the ones important enough to include with maybe a max of four. An overview of the design process. This section is going to be your largest and you won't be using all of the details in your final portfolio, but it's good to write everything out now and pick the best parts later. Here are some design process steps you should include. Research, a site map, prioritization matrix, sketches, wireframes, visual designs, and high fidelity mockups. With each section, include a sentence about who you worked with and maybe outline what worked well. Include as many screenshots and photos as you want here so that you can pick the best ones later. Wrap up your draft with outcomes and insights, or in other words, your results, the data you got from this design, and anything you would do to improve the process next time. Put your entire experience on the page, and after this first draft, revise your case study to be as specific and concise as possible. Hiring managers want to know the value you brought to this project immediately, and you should be able to show it immediately. That's why we suggest going against the conventional advice here, the advice to write your case study chronologically with the solution last. Laying out the context, the problem, and then the solution gives the reader all the information they need to know with the opportunity for more detail if they choose it. This format is also an example of executive communication, which is a huge plus for lots of hiring managers. When you're putting your case study together, you'll want to let the work speak for itself, and you don't need to show the entire design process to do it. Try to cut your case study down to three or four sentences of context per section and one sentence for each design step you took. Why? because people are going to skim your case study anyway, and you want to make it easy for them to find the information that they're looking for. What if the company you were working for uses classified information? Go through the same exercise and double check with your former team what you legally can and cannot include or show publicly. Sometimes it is just not worth it. But if you really want to include something, you can include the team and role that you played on that team, the company, of course, and your contact information so that the hiring manager can get more context if they want it. You can say something like, if you need more information, please contact me at dot dot dot. What if you were working on a project independent of a company? This actually provides an opportunity for you to pick projects within an industry that you're interested in and that you want to work for. As an example, if you're interested in fashion, you could create a design project around a new direct-to-consumer fashion app, or you could improve on an existing company's on-site experience. You can go through the entire design process on your own to show that you know certain tools or have particular design skills. When it comes to the number of case studies you should have on your portfolio, shoot for three to six. If you're new to design, three works great, but showcasing more than six case studies on your portfolio might indicate you don't know how to prioritize your work. You can write as many case studies as you'd like, but you should only be showing your three to six best projects at any given time. Case studies are the foundation of your portfolio, but the way that you showcase that information is equally important. As long as you have these three things, the best portfolio is one that's easy to understand, shows a little bit of personality, and of course, 
It's a portfolio that gets made. Entry-level designers can use simple tools like a Notion page linked to Google Slides of each case study. And as you gain more experience, you can create new formats that speak to that experience. You can turn these assets into PDFs and link those items to a landing page. Nothing has to go to waste here. Here's one layout idea to get you started. On a landing page, write your name, a sentence that explains your personal mission statement, your current role, team, and employer, and then jump straight into the work with a recent work section that contains links to your case studies. And these links should have a visual, like a logo, title for the project, the role that you played for that project, and a one sentence summary of the project as well. The things that you want the reader to see should be at the top with your older work at the bottom and have a footer with your main contact information, like an email or any social links you are willing to give out. Have a separate about me page that includes a professional picture of you, professional is important, and includes your pronouns and lets the reader get to know you a little bit. What are you trying to do with your career? What are you currently doing for work? What did you do previously? What do you do outside of work? And what kind of design statement would you like for your future career to say? Some people link out to a separate resume. Others just reprint it on their About Me page or link a PDF. Whatever floats your boat. What are some ways you can set yourself apart? It is not by being flashy. Remember that you are making a UX design portfolio. It's going to be direct, simple, and clear. Resist the temptation to include anything too distracting. Other types of design portfolios, for instance, graphic design portfolios, they should be editorial with lots of fonts flying around and even showcasing brand work. But the UX designer's job is to be engaging, yet quantitative and clear. Your portfolio should do the same. What will set you apart is executive communication, like we talked about in your case study outlines, making your site user-friendly. Maybe you add a back to top button after each section in your case study. And finally, making your portfolio look different than any Squarespace or Webflow template you might be using. That one's self-explanatory. Plus, you can find other ways to incorporate some personality. Check out other designer portfolios or sites like Dribbble or Behance for a little inspiration. Most importantly, get some feedback. Reach out to a couple other designers and get their input. Do your case study stories make sense? Have you quantified your results in a way that is very clear? Are your stories short and detail focused? Have you included information hierarchy? Are there spelling errors? Does it show your personality? Include a couple trusted voices from the beginning and your portfolio will be job ready in no time. Getting your portfolio together is a great first step to enhancing your career. Making sure you have the right skills to go with it is equally as important. Check out this video with the top five skills every UX designer should have. And if you're eager to learn more about UX design, check out the link in the description, which links to a free course to get you started.